name is Amar Jyot Singh. I'm talking to Lakshmi Rajendran from India, and uh, we will talk about uh, solutions to her questions, whatever she has. Uh, Lakshmi Rajendran, are you from uh, Hyderabad, Bangalore? Where are you calling me from? I'm from Tamil Nadu, from Tichy. From Tamil Nadu. Okay. I, I was in I was in Chennai last uh, two years ago. It was very hot and humid, a lot of uh, heat and oh. sweat. Uh, and I just thought maybe it's just a unique place. Anyway, go ahead and tell me yeah. your questions. What is your doubt so that I can answer those questions? Oh, okay. Um, I am looking for PR. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, first question is: Am I eligible to enter? I am forty-nine years old. Okay. So let let us review all this information one by one. You are forty-nine years old. What is your yeah. education? What is your education? Your degree? I uh, yeah, I completed uh, my Master of Commerce in nineteen ninety-two. Master of Commerce in 1992. Oh, that's a long time. Okay, and uh, what is your job right now? What do you What do you do at present? At present, uh, basically, I'm Indian, but a resident of Sri Lanka. I'm married to Sri Lankan. Okay, wait a second. So, my my question was, we'll come to come to the marriage later on. Uh, what is okay. your profession? What do you do? Are you working? Are you in business? What do you do at present? At present, last one year, I'm working in a manufacturing company as a manager. I'm, I am doing multitask. I'm, uh, it's a manufacturing company. Uh, or okay. taking the order, taking the phone calls, and uh, it's a manager position. Okay, so you're working in a managerial position for the past one year. And your, your experience is only one year or longer than one year? Beyond that, what are you doing? Something else? Uh, only one year. So I came to India for just for one month visit. So because of lockdown, I am staying here. Okay, uh, so okay, let let us go back to what you said earlier. Now you you are from Sri Lanka. Yes, yeah, I am resident of Sri Lanka, but I am Indian. Okay, so Indian citizen, but you live in uh, Sri Lanka, and you are your husband yes. is from Sri Lanka. Yes, yes, yes. Your husband is from Sri Lanka. Okay, and what does he do? What is his profession? What does he do? He is doing business. He is importing business. Importing business. What is he importing, and what is he? What can you uh, describe uh, in detail? Yeah, what? Importing, uh, it's a grocery item. So he's importing grocery item from where? Uh, it's it's according to the season. Sometimes from India. Uh, it's uh, for, for yeah. sugar mainly from uh, Brazil. Okay. Can I can I ask you? Would you know what is the gross sales or turnover last year and this year? Do you know? No, you don't know. No, my husband you, is your is your husband is your husband sitting with you right now? Can I talk to him? No, sir. I'm in India. He's in. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Mister. So he's in India. You are locked down. You're locked down in India. You cannot go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so you are you are not aware. You are not aware how big is this business? Is this a like a. Uh, huge business or just like a small shop or I mean how this is not a very yeah. big business I gather. Yeah, I can see if uh, turnover is uh, maybe 40 million per year. 40 million uh, rupees dollar can you tell me the currency? It's uh, Sri Lankan rupees. Okay and how much how much are we looking at this is uh, what is this currency rate I mean is this close to uh, it's not uh, one billion Canadian dollars or half million Canadian dollars. What, what is it about? Can you give me a little idea? Um, I think maybe no. I have to put a calculator on that one. Sri Lankan rupees. I, I wonder what that is. I am not sure. I can I can check quickly. I have to check on Google. You know, uh, Sri Lankan <laughs> to uh, to Canadian. Uh, Oh, okay, that's point zero zero seven two. Yeah, yeah, that is. Uh, you said you said forty forty million. Yeah, forty million turnover. Forty million. I'm saying oh. roughly yes. How many zeros is that? Uh, okay, let's check this out. Uh, so that's oh. close to yeah. I've I've got it. I've got it. I you know by the help of some Google, uh, I've got it. It's it's uh, it's less than. Uh, 
less than 300,000 Canadian dollars, 300,000, okay. close to less than 300,000 okay. Canadian dollars as of the, so that is the gross sales. How many employees are working with him? Uh, uh, 10 to 15. 10 to 15 employees are working. So that's a sizable business. It's not a small mom and shop operation. It is quite, uh, in a, okay, it's not, not somewhere in the middle. Um, the, the, the reality is, uh, uh, Lakshmi, that uh, based on your master's degree and your experience and your age, uh, you, you will not be able to go through the point system, which is the flagship program of the Canadian immigration. So that's the express entries. You, unfortunately, you will not make it there. Uh, I, don't see, I don't see any other way by which you can qualify, but your, your husband, who is a businessman, who has some experience running his own business, uh, and I can only speculate how much money he has. I do not know his net worth. I do not know how much money uh, can he do. But if he decides per chance to go to Canada and set up a similar operation of business, he can buy an existing business or he can you know, create something new, perhaps an import-export subsidiary or something. And I think that can open the doorway towards qualifying under entrepreneur class in some province. So that's all, that's, I can, that's all I can see for now. But we need more information about your husband's, for example. Uh, we have to look at his balance sheet and his profit loss account income statement for the past, okay. I would say, at least three years. You know, okay. sometimes, you know, okay. provinces will look for about five years. But I would say give or take just for a preliminary uh, assessment, we need to see at least for three years. That means three years uh, profit loss statements, his balance sheets, his net worth. Uh, number two, we need to find out what is his business plan? What kind of business can he do in Canada. He has never been to Canada, I guess. Has he been to Canada? Yes, sir. Uh, he's uh, quite often he's uh, frequently traveling to Canada. Oh, good. That's uh, that's extremely positive news. So he has some experience traveling to Canada and he has some experience observing and seeing something, uh, you know, some business that he likes in Canada. And he already has the existing visitor visa at present or no? Yeah, he has. Uh, he has. Oh, good. Then, then, uh, then we are talking something. That, that's a silver lining here in the stock clouds. So, uh, what I want him to to do is, you can let him know, and you can show him this video. Uh, okay. I want I want him to go to Canada whenever the time comes. Right now, there's a lockdown. Maybe he cannot travel because he's not an essential visitor. Uh, so, when he goes to Canada, wherever he goes, whichever city he likes, he can go there. He, he can look up some. Uh, business properties for sale, some businesses for sale, and then make a decision whether he wants to buy that business, uh, unless he wants to create a new one, and then and then make a deal with that uh, seller who is selling him a business, and then use that as a business plan for making an entrepreneurship application. So I know little. There's this is a quite a mouthful here to say everything quite quickly mm -hmm. but the first step is the first step is he needs to go to canada to identify a business that he can buy all right that's number one mm -hmm. which is okay. very impractical to it cannot happen online it cannot happen sitting in sri lanka i mean he has to literally go there spend maybe one week two week or maybe a month going around mm -hmm. and and checking out what is for sale and then uh, you know and then decide on a price and then of course, he can then, he makes a business plan, he, he, he sends this business plan, he makes an express entry, like a, it's not express entry, but it's like an expression of interest profile with the provinces. You know, every province yeah. have a different entrepreneur, uh, uh, you know, application requirements, so he can make a, uh, make a profile, uh, submit it to them, and uh, hopefully based on the points that he can accumulate, he, he will have to show his education, his managerial experience, his English language, his homework that he has done regarding the business, uh, his business plan, uh, you know, how much uh, projected sales can he generate, what is the tentative employment generation, and so forth. Uh, and based on based on those plans, the province, the, the immigration department of that province will decide whether he is a potential 
success for entrepreneurial program in that in that place. If he is, and that they will decide, not me, not you, not somebody else. If if it is decided that he's a good match and good candidate and has a little cutoff, uh, you know, beyond the beyond the minimum, uh, then he will be given a provincial nomination uh, certificate uh, that he will use to file for his PR based on the entrepreneur. Then he will, based on that on that nomination, he he will get a work permit to start his business, and he can bring you. And if you have children, all the dependent children can you know live uh, accompany the father, and you can live in Canada. You can start your own business. Uh, meanwhile, your application is pending, uh, and that takes close to about 18 to 24 months. But, you, you know, you are in Canada, you are living in Canada, you get uh, other benefits uh, which are given to work permit holders, and, uh, and, and that's it. So, uh, in short, the only way I can see in your family situation is based on your husband's managerial skills, his business experience, and the money he is willing to invest. Because... Uh, typically, you know, you go to any province in Canada, you are looking at close to, you know, starting from $150,000 plus whatever business you want to buy. That's that's in dollars, by the way, all right? So $150,000, you can multiply into Sri Lanka and see how many, uh, whatever that is. So uh, typically starting from 150000 and up, depending on, you know, if the province is very expensive, like British Columbia and Toronto, you know, looking at, uh, huge multiple like 400,000, 500,000 and even more. But, you know, you, you must be mentally ready. Your husband must be mentally ready to invest close to, I would say, at least about $300,000, between two hundred fifty and $300,000 to start your own business. So that's my, that's my advice for him. Okay, okay. okay. So, so he's going there. Uh, I can go with him. Uh, what about my children? Uh, absolutely, is, is absolutely. Is, absolutely. Is absolutely. Any... The whole, the whole yeah. family will get the PR. The, uh, finally, finally, eventually, the whole family will get the PR. Your children are how, how old are they? Uh, my eldest son is 25 years old. My oh, okay, okay. Son... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take it back. I thought you were very young, though. I'm sorry. So, so anybody who's 25, 22 plus, so he's not a dependent uh, on the family. So any, any, uh, any single unmarried less than 22nd birthday, that is a dependent child on an application. So that child will get a benefit of this application. But anybody who has crossed 22nd, he is independent and separate. So, you know, he does not get to... My second son is 20, 20 years old. My second one is 20 years that's, old. That's good. 20, 20, 20, or 20 year old is, is, is good. 20 years. So yeah. every eventually the whole application will benefit... Uh, all uh, husband, wife, and the twenty-year-old, and uh, that that's it. But they can even go sooner. What I said earlier was that if the if the uh, provincial application for nomination is accepted and they are issued a, a PNC uh, class, uh, then you know the the husband can file for a work permit, which is given in that class. It is a LMI exempt work permit, uh, and and he can get a work permit and at the same time apply for you. So both husband and wife can get open work permits to enable you, to enable the family to start the business, whatever business plan they have given to them. And as a as a dependent child, you know, a 20 year old can also accompany at the same time. So so the nuts and bolts are that all three can get get to go to Canada while the application for, for actual PR is pending and because that's a federal application and that takes close to, you know, I don't know, close to maybe uh, between one and a half years and two years, depending on circumstances. Uh, but so this is, this is the only thing I can see at this point of time in your, in your background. Okay. Uh, one more question, sir. I, I have gone through the YouTube videos. They are saying that uh, and there is no age problem. You can come to Yukon and also they are saying like that. That's why I tried this one because I am the one interested to move to the Canada. My, my husband is uh, yeah. uh, doing business in Sri Lanka. So first I yeah. want to try this one. So later sure. then they will come let and me, join me. Let, let, me give you, let me give you some, let me give you some tips about these uh, programs. Uh, most of the provincial programs where you where you 
you you saw a, a thing about go to Yukon. If you look carefully, they have to have uh, you know these applicants who will successfully be qualifying for Yukon. For example, in your case, you have to have a job offer. Without job offer, I don't see that you will qualify for the Yukon uh, provincial nominee program. And uh, my question is, how will you get the job? And where is the job? Who's offering a job? If you have a job, if you have a job offer, if you have a skill job offer, of course you will qualify for PNP there. Uh, not only that, uh, you know, before you even qualify for PNP, you can apply for a skilled, uh, if, if it is a skilled job, you can apply for a work permit to go there and while you're waiting for a PNP as well. So the job offer definitely opens a lot of doors in Canada uh, through work permit or through PR, through uh, nomination and other things. Uh, but but the million dollar question is the million the million uh, not dollars million Sri Lankan rupees uh, question is who will give you the job and where is the job if you have the job then then the, the direction of the discussion changes altogether. Yeah yeah. Yes. And uh, may may I remind you may I remind you uh, uh, perhaps if I may if I t if I can take that liberty you are you are. Uh, from South India, you are from Chennai, and you lived in. Uh, you know, you are you are uh, acclimatized to Sri Lankan uh, weather. Uh, Yukon is not not like Chennai and Sri Lanka. Yukon is minus twenty, minus thirty, and sometimes, and for a few days or a week, maybe uh, who knows, it can even go to minus forty. At 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 that temperature, your bones will chill. Your bones will freeze out. It is not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying to scare you, but uh, you know, it it takes time to get accustomed to that weather. Over over long years, you know, people will get uh, uh, accustomed and uh, acclimatized. But you know, I I know many people. I mean, I can tell you. Look, I'm from Edmonton, Alberta. It does not get too cold, but it does get, on an average, more cold uh, than the rest of Canada. I I have met so many people from. Tamil Nadu, from Andhra, from Karnataka, uh, even even they do not like the cold of Alberta. They think that's too cold. Uh, and in, in in Alberta, they think uh, they think uh, minus ten is too cold. They think uh, zero is too cold, and they uh, they want to move to other places like Vancouver. So I I don't know uh, whether you know somebody like you. I mean, if you are thinking of Yukon, you hardly know anything about Yukon, and uh, I and I can, you know, I I can I can pretty much uh, uh, visualize there may not be many South Indians living in Yukon for now, and you will not have, uh, <laughs> I mean, any any community to hang out or maybe eat uh, masala dosa or idli or you know South Indian dishes there. I mean, I maybe I'm wrong. But but uh, nonetheless, Canada is Canada. You can go anywhere. You can go anywhere in Canada. I mean, if you have a job and you can you can get comfortable. I mean, it's not like you will, uh, you know, like freeze to death. But it takes time to get uh, uh, you know familiar with the and especially the environment and the weather. Okay, okay. that is a um, very big problem. That weather is a very big problem for so me. With, yeah. With yeah, those those uh, those uh, videos that you are seeing and go to Yukon or go to New Brunswick or go to Nova Scotia. I mean, these these places are are attracting immigrants uh, due to the fact that not many people go there to begin with. I mean, if if everybody is going there anyway, uh, if there's a, if there's a large or sizable population already living there and and. and it is attractive to newcomers, and I mean they would not be uh, making all this, uh, you know, welcome videos that come and live there because, uh, you know, I mean places like, for example, Vancouver, where, you know, already a lot of immigrant uh, population and newcomers are already settled there for many years, for the past hundred years, uh, because of mm. uh, strong economic climate, strong, uh, you know, conditions about the weather, favorable, you know, weather conditions and other other leisure opportunities. Uh, British Columbia, and you, you will not find many videos uh, on the internet saying, hey, come and live in Vancouver because everybody knows about Vancouver and there's nothing much to say that come here because people are going there nonetheless anyway. I mean, there's no, not, nothing to say about please come to Vancouver. 
Uh, similarly for similarly for similarly for uh, Greater Toronto area, and you know, uh, these places have been hotspot for newcomers for years, you know, for decades. So they don't have to lay out the red carpet to attract people. I mean, Yukon, uh, Northwest Territory, uh, Maritime Provinces, you know, these these uh, places traditionally uh, uh, did not attract too many newcomers from Asian countries. And that's why, because of uh, dwindling population and, you know, not many people want to live there. So they have to roll out these schemes to attract people and people like you, uh, you know, who are, you know, <laughs> I mean, who, who are unfamiliar and you're saying, okay, let's, let's, let's go to Vancouver and it, that's, that's how it is. But hey, I'm not here to dissuade you. I'm not here to discourage you or anybody. What I'm saying is... No, sir, you, I, I want to know yeah. because... Uh, yeah. What, uh, what, I'm, what, I'm saying, yeah, what I'm saying is you should go where the job is. Anybody, anybody who's coming from outside Canada... I think I think the, your 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 motivating factor is where is the job? Where is the money? How much money will I make? What are my expenses? How, how, how much is my salary? You go. I mean, if you get a job in North Pole, you go to North Pole. I'm not I'm not I'm not uh, dissuading anybody, but just be prepared for those uh, conditions there. Where's the condition? Yeah, that's uh, that's the main big problem. Mm, yeah. You you have you have other other questions for me? Yes, sir. For my husband is going, he, he has to take any IELTS exam for the Yes, he has, to. he has to. He has to. IELTS examination is one of the uh, one of the very important, uh, you know, uh, uh, benchmark scores in the profiling system. And the higher, okay. and I'm sure there's a certain uh, cutoff, which I don't remember right now. If you, you can go to the website and they require a certain, you know, I, I'm sure at least he'll be, uh, six or CLB, you know, maybe uh, maybe five. Who knows? But you know, the lower score you have, the lower score in English you have, it 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 pulls your uh, score down. So it is in your self interest to study up and get your score as as much as possible. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, one more question is: that My husband is going to Canada looking for the PR, and also we have to close the business here. And uh, no, no, no. Start. That's a wonderful question. No, he does not have to close the business in Sri Lanka. He can continue doing his operation in Sri Lanka. You know, he can continue whatever he. There is no, there is no condition from the Canadian government to close down and wind up your business. If he wants to, he can. He can let it continue. But uh, just to, just to remind you. Uh, Whatever income he generates in Canada, he has to pay income tax on the Canadian operations here. So if he has, uh, if he has, uh, you know, uh, you know, income from Sri Lanka, you know, current income, other income, so that income can be can be, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, segregated for as far as reporting to the Canadian immigration liabilities as concerned. So, uh, but he, but he, there's no there's no compulsion. Uh, for from the Canadian immigration side to close down his business, he can he can continue running his business all over the world, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Yeah. According to business uh, visa and all, um, what is that? Uh, what about a startup startup business in in Canada? Yeah. If you're yeah, going to start startup business. The, the word startup business is very different from the startup that you are thinking. The startup business. Uh, typically, you know, it gives an uh, you know idea to anybody that you know a business that I just started up, any business, maybe a grocery or a restaurant or something. But the word startup business in Canadian immigration uh, implies a different uh, connotation. What what they are talking about is a new like a high tech venture or some other some other unique idea that you can attract financing from venture capitals uh, firms and entrepreneurial firms that they look like it's called incubator firms. So those are the categories that they are talking about. So so typically I'll just give you one example and maybe that will exemplify what they are meaning out uh, to what a startup in. And of course there's a there's a special track for PR. So uh, let let us assume you know South India you have a lot of software engineers and software geniuses IT consultants and many of them have unique idea uh, they want to start a new service that's called like in Silicon Valley startup you know high tech and if he has if if that person has a unique idea and that idea is promising 
to many potential investors. And there's a list of investors listed on the immigration website. You can go there and then find out. So you have to pitch this idea to those companies. And if those companies, th these are Canadian companies, and those companies, if they invest in your business and they create, and there's a minimum threshold that how much you know they have to, uh, they have to invest. If they invest in that business, and then it becomes a startup business qualified for immigration in that track. And it's very fast. Uh, I saw some cases uh, about three years ago uh, from Hong Kong area. And, uh, you know, uh, you get uh, you get PR in close to about six to seven months in that in that track, in that uh, stream. And you will get an immediate work permit in uh, less than about two months or so. So once you have all the all, all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. You have the business, you, you, you have uh, financing in that business, and then your application is ready. That's called a startup visa uh, in, in Canadian immigration. Mm, okay, okay, thank you, sir. Another thing is, sir, my husband is normally importing from Canada, pulses from Canada. We are importing pulses from Canada. Your, I'm sorry, your husband is importing pulses from Canada to sell in Sri Lanka. Yeah, yeah. How much do you do you know? I asked you earlier also. Do you know how much is the gross turnover of this? You know how much is importing, exporting from? Uh, how much is importing from Canada? What what is this? Uh, what what is the average uh, turnover? Would you know? No, sir. He sometimes he is uh, he bought sometime twenty to forty containers from there. You know, I, I I just need to know what what is the dollar value. I mean, if he's regular, he looks like he has been. I wish I could speak to him, but if he is importing uh, uh, regularly and for a long time, looks like that he is, he will continue in that business. Uh, may I also suggest that you know uh, he can he can also uh, he can also possibly open before he even uh, considers other businesses. May, he can possibly open a like a branch office or subsidiary office in yeah. Canada. Do you do you know he has an office in Canada? No, sir. No. Yeah, you you do not know, or you know that he does not have an office. No, no, no. no. I, I I'm sure he, he don't have any okay. branches in so Canada. May, may I may I suggest, and I can show you on the screen, or what I can show you something that you can let him know. Uh, let me just see see if I can show it is on the screen. Uh, so there is there is something called a intra company transfer visa. Can you see on the screen? I think you you can maybe. No, can you, no, sir. Can you, uh, I, I'm showing on the screen. You can't see something on the screen, right? I'm trying to show us yes, screen share. Yes, I can see. Yeah. You can yeah, see. It? I can. Yeah. yeah. So this this is this is called uh, uh, intra company transfer. Uh, you know, visa under Regulation Two Zero Five. This is you get a uh, you get initially you get a work permit, which is a LMIE exempt work permit, and he can open a. a like a subsidiary Fine. branch or affiliate of this uh, of this thing, and he can. He can, uh, you know, uh, transfer one of the senior executive or a manager. If he if he's the owner, then you know that that exempts him out. But if he has a senior manager or senior technical director or somebody uh, whom he can transfer to Canada, I think that is a good idea because he will not have to spend a lot of money. Because if he's going under entrepreneurship program, then he is looking to invest, uh, you know, uh, you know, like a huge amount of money. But if he can open a Open an intra-company transfer visa, and you know I'm I'm giving you all this information. I can send you the whole, uh, you know, you know, link and checklist there if you want to. Uh, if he okay. if he opens an office like this, I think that may be a better suitable idea to get started before he embarks on a big journey of investing a lot of money. So, uh, if he has an office in, uh, uh, if he has an office in in Canada, so he can he can start doing trading. He can open a bank account. Uh, there and mm -hmm. then he can file a tax ID and stuff and then start building up you know, his revenue uh, and then that will give him enough time for him to to understand the Canadian market uh, better maybe after six months then he can decide if he wants to buy a, a running business uh, to going forward or not but I think uh, practically this may be a, a better suitable quicker idea quicker means pragmatic practically quicker idea he already has a visitor visa. When the flights reopen, maybe he's he's going to uh, Canada. Maybe after December or January, uh, if the flights uh, reopen, and then he goes to Canada, he 
He incorporates a company. He registers a company like a private uh, limited incorporation company, and then opens a bank account and then takes a little office setup. You know, you know, just set up a little operation there. And uh, lo and behold, he is in business and he is ready to file for intra-company transfer visa. Uh, but the intra-company transfer. How do, we, uh, how do we find the incorporate uh, at companies in Canada? How, how first step? How we can we are going to Canada? You can, we are to, Are you saying that how to incorporate a business? That's what you're asking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all all these things can be done online. I will send you a link. I will send you the link okay. uh, from you know how to do that. Uh, but you can you can look at the requirements online. Uh, and also, when he if he is in Canada, he can also hire some you know some accountant, chartered accountant, or lawyers to do that. It's it's a quite an easy application. It does not take that long. I think. Uh, Typically, you can do this in a few hours, or maybe if not, in a few days. Uh, and and uh, the the cost is minimal. You know, I I doubt if any uh, you can do in less than thousand dollars everything. You know, even if you hire some lawyer or accountant to do this, so uh, it's quite easy. But I'll send you the online link how to do it and how to maintain those documents required uh, to do it. But uh, you know. Uh, so he can he can choose whichever way. But I I would rather have him. I mean just. Just for this discussion, I would rather have him wait till he actually goes to Canada to decide that he wants to incorporate because those there are some factors that that will impinge on his uh, decision on where does he want that office to happen, who is his, his because he likely will need an accountant to take care of record keeping and bookkeeping and other things. He will likely also need to talk to a, a company lawyer to find out what kind of uh, you know, uh, legal entity is good for him. Maybe he wants a sole proprietorship or he wants a partnership with somebody he knows in Canada, maybe a friend or somebody who will the, who will be the signing uh, authority, like, you know, director or so. So I think those those uh, issues need to be discussed with a, with a incorporation lawyer in Canada or somebody like a chartered accountant at the least. Uh, who can advise on those issues? So I would rather not have you do online by sitting in Sri Lanka, without uh, you know checking out those issues, uh, those factors. Okay. Once we go to Canada, then we have to search for. This I, I, I think idea. I think that might be a that might be a prudent step. Uh, I think uh, he should wait till he actually travels to Canada, and then he can he can open a company and then he can do everything. So while if he's in Canada for let's say one week, two week, or one month, everything can be done very quickly, very rapidly. I mean, uh, those those documentation and those registration requirements are not uh, you know lengthy. They are not very bureaucratic at all. Uh, it is a fast forward, uh, you know, rapid action uh, transactions. Okay, okay. If we, if we, if my husband start a company and branch over there, is there any condition to give a work to the Canadian people? Is there any condition under that? Point? Not a, not an intra company. Absolutely no. There's there's no there's no mandatory requirement for for that company to give a job to. I mean, it's not a mandatory requirement, but you know, look, look at look at different way, because uh, you are you are setting up a company, you are trying to uh, start a new business, you're trying to expand a business from Sri Lanka to Canada. You need somebody there to take care of the business. the 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 intent of the intra company transfer visa is to transfer one of your senior directors or senior manager, or a specialist or you know senior executive from Sri Lanka, and then transfer him to Canada so that that person will live in Canada to run your business. So the onus is on bringing somebody from Sri Lanka to Canada, not, you know, hiring. I mean, you can hire some uh, secretarial staff or, you know, other, you know, like a lower junior staff to run your operations there, uh, like sales and other things. But the, the primary purpose is to bring somebody who can run the business who is who is already working in your Sri Lankan enterprise for many years, hopefully at least three years, uh, and in the past one year at least in the senior capacity, and that person will come here. So so that's what it is. But you know this initially, initially this this visa will likely be issued for one year, and once you are in the in the position to renew your visa, let's say after one year, then you know the immigration will want to check whether you're making any money, whether you have some gross sales, your business is flourishing, are you, you know, your tax liabilities and so, so if you have hired some local people, I think that will, 
you know, be, uh, that will, you know, allow you to show a very favorable payroll. And I, I think that is very conducive towards the success of the business itself. Okay. So, uh, uh, how many years we have to do like this in the, to get the PR? Uh, the, the, the PR, yes. So, if you are going through the intra-company route, so the PR will be given to the person who gets the visa. So, if your husband is the owner, uh, so he cannot, there are very few exceptions, but he cannot allow himself to get a work permit based on the, the owner cannot cannot transfer him in there saying, I'm the owner, I want to go. So, it is like, you know, helping somebody out, like, you know, asking uh, senior director of your company. So it's not your your husband who will get the visa. It's somebody else. But if that person works in Canada, so he, if he's working for one year, for example, then he is accumulating some experience working for that company. That means he's getting salary from the business. He's getting uh, pay stubs and you know other other nice things. So he is now building up Canadian experience. So it all depends on uh, what are, what are his points. You know, in the, for example, if he goes under the express entry in the Canadian experience class, so that's a combination of his education, his language skills, and his experience, his foreign experience, his Canadian experience, his education. And if the points matching up to the minimum cutoff, then he qualifies for PR. Uh, if it's all, it's all the points came at the end. Okay, okay. But you know what? What I'm what I'm trying to make you aware is that. Uh, the reasons I mentioned intra-company transfer visa is that I don't want your husband to spend a lot of money right now, $200,000, $300,000 in buying a business that he may not be sure of, for example. So that's, that's, that's I'm trying to stop, you know, making a huge financial blunder. The second is that I want him to uh, make money by, you know, having a Canadian office, Canadian presence so that he can increase his volume of business, you know, import and export. So that's the second advantage. The third advantage is that having a business and having a running operation in Canada will allow one of his senior executive to be, be there in Canada for, for some time. That will also allow him for having, you know, to take like multiple trips back and forth to Canada. And in every time he goes to Canada, he he is given possibly like a six months entry or so. So he will have sufficient opportunity to understand the business climate of Canada and also to uh, to you know to to recognize if there are any business opportunities beside the import export that he can invest in. So that's the that's the reason why I'm I'm asking him to take it slow and easy and not jump ahead and make a financial ruinous mistake. Yeah, yeah, that's good, sir. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, that's it, sir. Yeah, only only way my husband is doing this. Otherwise, uh, I'm sorry. My so only 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 through my husband only we are planning to go. Otherwise, no other way for my family. Yeah, 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 absolutely. In in your in in your situation, your husband, wife, you know, uh, because of the age and because of the lack of that sizable experience, uh, your express entry, uh, you know, profile is is not uh, is, is it will not go there. Absolutely not. Yeah, there is no point for the age, but the CRS score is very high. I'm sorry, say that again. Yeah, compared to me, CR score is I can't reach that score. No, yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, you can see that. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. we have to we have to live with the realities of life. Whatever the whatever the practical reality is, we have to face it, and we have to make the best uh, best use of whatever we have. Yeah. yeah. But you know, there there are few there are few advantages. Uh, there are few positive. Uh, positives in your situation. Your husband already has a flourishing business. He already has the money and wherewithal to take this journey and open this office and then uh, consolidate his business. He already has a visitor visa. Uh, so that uh, that uh, opens a lot of uh, possibilities for the future. And then he can he can continue, you know, uh, seeing that. But uh, lastly, if if not, uh, I know you did not ask me, but uh, nonetheless, I will still add. Uh, we have been talking about how to open a business and uh, maybe open an office and you know look out for any business asset that he want to buy. Uh, besides all of this, if he is traveling to Canada and if he has a job offer from, let's say, let us assume maybe a different uh, 
business or different import export company or or some other some other entity if they are interested in giving a job offer to your husband because your husband has managerial experience and has import export experience that job offer can lead him to a direct work permit to him so that means uh, whether he uh, discontinues a business or not then he can independently and separately become an employee of some other company and help them run the business and uh, that okay. will give him a work permit to him and and then to you uh-huh that's a nice idea so, yeah yeah so that he is has a lot of experience yeah yeah he can work under one company he can get a easily get the pr well uh, sure so if he if he yes. gets a, may i ask what is his education is yes, he study a level advanced level, level is, it, uh, what what a level is grade 12 what is a level grade 12 yeah yeah grade yeah. so but if he if he has a level but he has a, a lengthy experience of running his business right of course as you say family business family business so if he based on the look i mean i'm not the right advisor i'm not a, like a placement consultant i'm not a, like a, you know hr advisor here but based on his uh, entrepreneurial experience and based on his uh, self employment experience and running his own business uh, if if he should if i were him i mean if i were him i would try to uh, touch base with other import export companies in canada and there might be many and you can go to google and find out uh, maybe some federations have a list uh, find out which are the other companies who are in the import export business in canada uh reach out to them talk to them on the phone or send them your resume and you you tell them about your own background about import export and ask them whether they are looking for some sales manager or a marketing manager or some business development manager uh looking to promote business between sri lanka and canada or india and canada and then you have to sell your own own uh you know applicant profile to them and say look uh, this is what i can do for you and uh, if they look at your background and if they like you and they interview and say yes uh, we need a marketing manager or, or somebody like you to promote more business like the canadian exports to sri lanka or sri lankan imports to canada uh, maybe there's a deal i mean who knows maybe he even get a, a good job managerial job marketing management job or something you know which can and you know, i'm i'm just like, trying to make a guess maybe around at least yeah. 60000 70000 a year yeah if that if that happens yeah. hey hey if, yeah. if that hey if that happens you know i think uh, then you can save all the money save all the hassle save all other things and then uh, lo and behold uh, he has a work permit along with you and your dependent son yeah, okay. uh, can we get this uh, information from our embassy canadian embassy from sri lanka who is really uh, important no you can uh canadian embassy in sri lanka uh yes the 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 canadian high commission i think right it's probably a high commission there so yeah, the, yeah. the 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 canadian high commission i i don't know about sri lanka but the canadian high commission in new delhi uh they have a trade commissioner's office there you know these people that office that sub unit and the people working in that unit are responsible for engendering import export transactions and other business development between two countries so they are the best people i can send you a link uh, let me see if i can show you i don't know if i can show you i will try my best but uh, the canadian high commission in new delhi has a lot of resources about who's importing and who's not importing and those uh, those uh, those things and i i bet uh, you can find out uh, from the canadian high commission in colombo as well they may have it as well so you can make an appointment yeah. with them go and talk to them and or maybe send an email to them and ask them you know what what are the major exports and imports from sri lanka and india and then uh, they may also be able to help you get in touch with some major companies or you can look at i know in india they have uh, uh, you know federation of indian exporters and fikki chambers of commerce which deal with export you can go to one of the offices and find out which are the major import export from from canada and uh, it used to be i mean that's been long time i saw it. it used to be that they had a list of all the importers and exporters uh, uh in from from different countries so you can get this list and then you will come to know who is the major player who is importing exporting in your 
in your product area and then you can uh, talk to them and that's what it is so let me just show you uh, i can uh, let's see if i can uh, you send me the link uh, for this one for how to meet that uh, yeah, hang on, hang, important hang on. just a minute hang on just a minute let me see if i can show it on the screen itself i i like to show people right on the spot instead of delaying for the future can you can you see this uh, Can you see on the yeah, screen? Yeah. Can you see on the screen? Yes, sir. I can, so, I can this see. So this is this is a this this is just an example, by the way. This is just an example. This is the New Delhi Canadian High Commission New Delhi. So this is a uh, address and stuff, and the website is Trade Commissioner dot blah 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 in GC, and it tells you names of it's called Minister Commercial name, phone, uh, email address. Everything is listed there, and there are quite a number mm -hmm. of one, one, two, three, four. Boy, there are quite a number of. They are all called Trade Commissioners. and their job is they have only one job to promote the business between india and and uh, canada so you can contact with any any one of these people and uh, they will be able to help you so uh, this is called tradecommissioner.gc let me just see if i can show you on the screen so you can see on the screen right trade commissioner yes, indian trade right, commissioner yes. service in india and and that's it and then you will be able to see in Let me check if I can see in Sri Lanka as well. I mean, I know I'm in showing you India, but let's see Sri Lanka. So uh, your husband is uh, is in uh, Colombo area capital. Where is he at? Uh, is he? Colombo, Colombo area. We are living in Colombo area. Where is she? Oh, here is Sri Lanka. I see Sri Lanka. Some years ago, I used to say Sri Lanka is Ceylon. I don't know how they changed from Ceylon to Sri Lanka. I'm just used to saying Ceylon for some reason. Yes, before it was Sri Lanka. After that, they changed the name. Yeah. So you see, doing business in Sri Lanka, trade offices in Sri Lanka. Let's see if I can. Oh, here is the address, right there. This okay. is the address. This is the phone number. This is the you know the email, and there's a separate URL. There, this office is responsible for Sri Lanka and Maldives. Maldives, I think Maldives, Maldives, and uh, that's it. So you can you can follow from there. everything okay. is please send me email regarding the sri lankan companies and so could you please yes. send me the email? yes i will okay. i will i will send you i will send you so mm -hmm. that's how that's how you have to do so let, let us let us summarize let us summarize because i know it's been you know little baby out of uh, out of uh, you know attention now uh, let us let us summarize what we just discussed so what we discussed earlier we discussed earlier that your points fall short of the express entry profile based on your profession that's one thing we discussed we discussed that the second way is that because your husband already has a a business experience he could he could likely qualify based on investment in some business as an entrepreneur uh, third third what we discussed was that if he wants to uh, expand his business intra company transfer visa is one option for him to you know expand his business uh, we also discussed that intra company transfer visa gives another added advantage not only adding business but also giving him more time to to survey and study what is the business climate of canada if he can spot a uh, uh acquisition of any running business so he will have more time instead of making a hasty and and you know quick decision so that he does not waste his money somewhere in the wrong decision the last thing we discussed was number 5 we discussed that based on his experience based on his expertise in import export between sri lanka and canada uh perhaps he can get in touch with some companies in canada uh who who are likely looking to hire a talent like him in the capacity of business development or ma marketing management and they can offer him a job in canada that will allow him to apply for work permit possibly through a lmia which of course is not difficult because you know these kind of marketing managers are you know hard, hard to get as far as citizens are concerned so i don't see much of a problems he will likely get a work permit and uh, once he gets a work permit then he can bring you and the dependent son and you can live happily ever after in canada okay okay that's it sir do you have any more questions for me or uh, uh no sir so after that i'm looking for you through my if this won't work i will go with my children how they are going 
through my children. They are still studying. The, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, I, I missed that. You, you talked about your going through your children. So if your children, for example, uh, the one is 25, the second is uh, 20, if they want to, they are a little young on the younger side. If they want to study something, maybe they want to do a, a higher level university course or higher level college course, and you know they can independently qualify as a student and they can be on a student visa. Students typically they get work permit and then qualify eventually based on the education and experience. So that is always a option open to you, whether the parents go or not, the students can always go. Yeah, I already um, tried this one. So my younger son was got a uh, selection in the Waterloo, University of Waterloo. That, uh, yeah, that was so too expensive. That's why we decided to send him to USA. I'm sorry, your your elder son got an admission in Waterloo, but you decided to send him to USA. What is he studying in USA? In one, second, for second son, for second son. Oh, second son, the, the one who's 20 years. Okay, what is he studying in USA? You say he's first, he started in uh, mechanical engineering. After that, he's changing his major to mathematics. He's uh, good in mathematics. Oh, good. So he's he's in one of those STEM uh, subjects, so he has a good future ahead, you know, whenever he's looking for a job. And he will also yeah. likely, you know, benefit from the future H-1B if that remains open. We do not know what happens to the current administration, but yeah, those options have been open. But, uh, you know, similarly, your second son, what is your second son who's 25 years old? What does he do right now? Uh, already he studied in USA. After that, he came back to Sri Lanka. Now he's studying uh, uh, computer science. So he studied in USA. Now he returned, and then again he's studying computer science in Sri Lanka. What at what what degree is he studying at? Oh, sorry, sir. What is he studying in Sri Lanka? You said that he's studying again in Sri Lanka. Yeah, computer computer science, bachelor no, of computer science. I mean, what what degree? Uh, I think software, software engineering. No, no, I know, I know software. Is he studying masters or PhD? What is he studying at? What is the degree? No, no, so he's going from bachelor because uh, we didn't get the uh, job for the mechanical engineering in Sri Lanka. So he started doing that uh, bachelor degree again in computer science. Okay, wait a second, wait a second. So you're talking about an elder son now who's 25 yeah, years yes. old. So he, yeah, what, he's, did, what did he study in US? He is mechanical engineering. At what level? What was the diploma level, certificate, degree? What did he study no, in mechanical engineering? University level, four years course. So he studied four-year course in mechanical engineering, and later on, then he returned to Canada, or uh, returned to sorry, Sri Lanka, and okay. now he's studying bachelor's in computer science again. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. I've got it. So, I mean, uh, seems like he's a serious student. He wants to study, uh, and he wants to keep studying. That's fine. Uh, but if he... If he wants to study in Canada, that option is always open to him now or even in the future. Mm -hmm. He is planning after finishing his degree, he wants to go to Canada. OK, and not Hello. to US. And I guess not to US. No, not to US, not to US. OK, may I ask, may I ask uh, why not? Because he already spent some time in US. He returned uh, to Sri Lanka. He's studying something in future if he wants to study further overseas then he chose not to go to us but to go to canada may i ask why what is what did what what is his perception about us versus canada yeah because uh, uh, he thought he's unable to get the job over there if have, so hnb has a lottery system that he yeah, has to the, it will take for six years yeah basically because of the immigration complexities basically uh, because of the uncertainty in, in getting this H1B and green card and other things. So uh, Canada is a favorable for them because he's very likely maybe he can he can get this quicker. Yeah, that's why he decided to go to Canada after finishing his degree. So he wants to go there. OK, well, that's fine. That's that's wonderful. So you have you have things lined up for your children. That's that's OK. Uh, as far as you and your husband are concerned, uh, you already have a planned, uh, uh, you know, uh, track and then you can follow whichever whichever one, you know, whether through a job offer or through intra-company transfer visa or if he wants to buy a business directly so he can choose any one of them. Mm -hmm. Is there any NOC code for that uh, if my husband is working under that uh, intra uh, company? import export company if they have uh, taken he, uh, he, he does not need to identify any noc 
for applying for intra-company transfer visa. The intra-company transfer visa, remember I said earlier, it is not for the owner of the company. It is for somebody else, like the senior director or a senior manager in the company. So the NOC code will be will be uh, for him to, uh, you know, it's very likely, I mean, we don't know what is the designation of that person. If he's a marketing manager, then we can look up the NOC for marketing manager. If he's a finance director or something, or maybe he's a commercial director. So we need to look at the job description of the person to identify what is the right NOC. But it does not matter. Whichever NOC, it will be very high enough for him to qualify at the level of that of that intra-company destination. Okay, 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 sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's it, sir. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Lakshmi, and uh, I wish you well. And uh, perhaps uh, you know, uh, if you if your husband does come to Canada at any time in the future, uh, ask him to give me a call. Yeah. How, how can I contact you? This uh, this same number? So you, same you number. Any personal? I, I only have the same number. My number has has not changed for the past thirteen years. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. If I if I need any help, please help us. Sir. Well, we I have I have laid out the path to you. You have to take the decision and to choose one. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. My my job sir. my job is to give you clear guidance and to remove some doubts and ambiguities and you know remove the confusion. That's my job. Uh, but okay. ultimate, ultimately, uh, you have to see uh, you have to see mentally, uh, you know, emotionally, physically, you know, intellectually, what is the best for you, which one which one works out for you. But I have yeah. I have I have laid out what are the what are the practical options through immigration. What options are open to you? Okay, 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 sir. Okay, thank right. you, Mr. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank, thanks. Could you please? Uh...